Google Meet was opened up in May of 2020 as a free service for all holders of Gmail or Google accounts to supplement other options for video meetings during the massive great hunkering quarantine that we've all been facing. This is a reduced capability version of a service that's part of the G Suite, normally available only to enterprises, schools, and businesses that pay for a subscription for G Suite services. With Google Meet, it prov provides some nice utility for what they claim is up to 100 participants in a meeting, but the controls are not intuitively obvious. They're a little easy to get lost, so this is a demonstration of walking through the controls. If you're logged into your Google account, you can go to meet.google.com. You will see this opening screen. It has several options to include starting an uh, invitation for a future meeting by date and time that you can send out to selected recipients, adding guests from your list, or you can enter a meeting code that somebody has sent you, a URL that takes you straight into a meeting, or you can simply start a meeting on your own, which we're going to do here. When you click Start a Meeting, it opens up your camera, gets you started. You can join the meeting, go directly in, or you can select a screen area to show as you're entering video. I've had difficulty getting this to work easily, but I'll show you the presentation mode once we're in the meeting. Camera's on. I join. This gives me the next opportunity to add people by adding email addresses and inviting them while the meeting's going on copying it there to go into email for other folks. In this mode, we have a control bar across the bottom with menu items that we'll walk through. Meeting details, just two simple things. Copy the joining information so you can send that out by text or email to others. Should you have added attachments to a meeting calendar item, then those will be listed here for folks to pull down. Through the center are rather common microphone on-off control and camera on-off control where you can stop the camera. It still picks up the audio or we can go back to video. Turning on captions is nice. You can do that at any time in the meeting. Hitting there. Once this is on, the audio is sent to a Google server. Consider this for your privacy issues. Translated to text and sent back down. To present a portion of your screen, which again you can do at any time during the meeting, click here. You can select the entire screen, one window, or if you're using Chrome, which I am here, use a Chrome tab. I showed you previously that we'd opened a tab for sharing the invitation set up in the calendar. To get back from here, all I have to do is click the meeting and then stop presenting, we're back to camera. This additional menu gives you some additional options which are good to know. The change layout shows how the group of videos are handled, automatic or you can force it to one of the three modes. This appears to be the default from the couple of test meetings I've run with whoever speaking video here, others either a video or a name plaque along the side. Spotlight, only the speaker is shown, or tiled, everybody is shown with their vi video or if their camera's off with their tiled name, but the speaker is not highlighted. Other op options in this menu include full screen, which does what you expect and expands the window to take up the entire screen. Turn on captions, same control as down here. Settings gives you some important options where if you have multiple audio and video devices connected, you can select them. Here we, we have the default separate microphone I'm using for the microphone. The connected USB webcam has a microphone, and then we've got the one that's built into the computer, so I can go with any of those. Likewise, for the speakers coming back, the speakers on the computer or the ones in the headset that I'm wearing. For video, if you have more than one camera, you can select either camera. As happens, I've got a USB camera connected as well as the built-in FaceTime camera. More importantly are the resolution controls. The default when you open a meeting is to standard definition, 360p. You can send at standard or high. Notice when I change 
to high definition, I get a different expanded view of the view area of the camera. Receive is even more valuable because that lets you control your bandwidth coming down with high definition for everybody, standard definition, or standard definition but only show the video of who's talking, or go to, to pure audio for, the, for what you're receiving. I'll leave it for our meeting on high definition and out. Back again to continue our walkthrough. These bottom three are for communicating with Google if you've got a problem or question during your meeting. We showed the presentation. You can get to that. Now, this bar is very handy, lots of valuable pieces, but when you go to either the chat or the participant list, you lose that bar. Chat is, as you would expect, allowing everybody in the meeting to chat with type while somebody else is speaking. The people list, which is the other option, shows a thumbnail video of each person who's in or their name placard if their camera's off and the name. If there are multiples here and you click on one video, that pins it. And what that means is no matter who's speaking, that's the video that you'll see in your main area. The add people is your last chance to add people during a meeting at any time. I'm not going to click that because when you do, it opens up your Gmail or Google contact list. So it shows names and email addresses of those in your contact list. You don't need to see mine. You'll notice, however, we've lost what we have down at the bottom, which is where the other controls are. Easy to get that back, and this is one of the important ones. Click on it, the side window closes, and you're back to here. So obviously you cannot be watching the chat and controlling, but the chat will continue scrolling as you're going through. So we've walked through the side window for people and type chat during the meeting. The control bar is across the bottom, starting and stopping your microphone. Remember to do this if you've got a cough or sneeze, if you need to blank for any reason, or if just if you want to be polite with the bandwidth you're sending out, you can control your camera. Uh, turning on captions is pot potentially very handy if there are noise or audio problems or somebody needs the assistance and the presentation option. Remember that you need to be able to get back to the screen to click on it to be able to, to turn the present, your presentation off. This is the completes the walkthrough of all of the controls across the bottom, how to get in and out of your windows, and how to invite people using the Google Calendar feature, which is built into it.